Hi everyone and welcome back to Curly and Yarny. My name is Milena and in today's video I will be showing you how I mash in hand my dish towels. So let's get started. So in last week's video I showed you how I wet finish my dish towels and if you missed it don't worry I will put the link in the description down below for you to check it out. So today we will be doing the last step that I do when I finish a piece so I will be hemming those dish towels and I will show you every step that I take in this process so let's just let's just start this now. <laughs> so uh, now the towels uh, have been washed, they have been dried and they are ready to be hemmed so uh, they are still all attached together so uh, we have a bit of preparation to do uh, to the towels before we can get to uh, the sewing machine. So I will walk you through what I do uh, here at this step. Before we go any further, I feel the need uh, to warn you, I'm really not a good sewer. So this is uh, skills that are very new to me and I'm trying to improve. So uh, if you have any recommendation to help my sewing skills, please tell me in the comments down below. <laughs> so that will be very appreciated. So now let's start this. All right, so we will start uh, with uh, the first towel, so the one that I wove using some um, some cotton slab. So first of all, we are going to try to show you the best way. <laughs> so uh, first of all, we are going to cut the nuts here. So um, because I want to uh, cut them loose and then prepare for the hem. This part can be uh, done uh, with the help of a serger. Usually when I need to uh, hem some dish towels, I go to my mom's place because she has a serger and better sewing skills than I do. <laughs> but because uh, of COVID and because now we, need tr we live three hours away, I cannot do it. Uh, so uh, I will make do without a serger, so just know that both things are possible. One thing that I really like about the serger is that I just uh, Surge both ends of the towel and then anything can happen to the towel the ends are secured and so I can pause what I'm doing and then go back to it afterwards there is no risk of unraveling but today there will be a bit more risk of unraveling so I will try to do this in a secure <laughs> and quick way so first I'm just going to cut those here and while I cut I try to keep as much possible of the woven uh, hand woven piece so when we have nuts Sometimes what happens, we kind of like have the uh, white threads merged together and we have this, those little um, weft threads here that are a bit looser. I don't really like the look of it, but I still want to keep as much as I can. So uh, this is about, about how much that I cut. This we can dispose of. And now I want to uh, make an M that's, I'm ge generous on my hemming, so about one inch. So let me just uh, jump right in here because I want to do, uh, I want to add a little uh, explanation. So for the very first towel, I did my hem pretty big, so about one inch wide. And uh, the reason for this is because I'm not always so comfortable with sewing and I find that bigger hem is easier to handle. Also, I. I really don't hate the look of it. I think it'll just look, it looks bulky and I kind of like it. Uh, this being said, for the following towels, I trusted myself and I did a narrower hem. So for all the other towels, I, will, I, I did about half an inch, as you will see in the video. This to me seems a bit more uh, maybe standard uh, hemming, but really at the end, just uh, do what feels more comfortable for you. And honestly, it's the same technique whether I do them very large or if I do them smaller. But I find personally that it requires a bit more dexterity when I make them a bit narrower. So uh, when I feel not so comfortable, I go with the bigger option, but really it's up to you and what you prefer. So let's go back to the video. I use this gauge from my grandma's uh, sewing equipment, uh, so it helps me a lot uh, when doing this. So um, the hem, what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, fold it once and then fold it twice a second time like this. And uh, in order to really help with the sewing, I find that it helps when I uh, iron in between those steps. So I first, I'm just going to turn them for the first time and try to have it all equal with the one inch mark. Here, like that. Okay. 
I'm going to take a pin needle and pin this. And now I'm going to uh, turn them over one more time so that the place where they're unsecure will be inside of the hem. So I carefully take some of the needle out and again with my gauge I want to have about one inch. So I'll turn here. <laughs> So now I am about to start the sewing. So here I have my old Bernina sewing machine. So it is a 730 record. So it used to belong to my grandma. I think she got it as a gift from my grandpa in the 70s. And it has a lot of meaning to her. It was a favorite sewing machine and I am very honored to be able to sew on it again today. Although my sewing skills do not honor her sewing skills, at least not yet. <laughs> so simply doing a straight a stitch as I am not super comfortable with sewing and uh, what I tried to do is of course I want it to be as close as possible uh, to this line so that uh, we don't have extra uh, clothes sticking out but for me I tried to guide the uh, line of the hem with the line of the foot and I go like this mon aiguille qui croche So now we have one hem done, yay! <laughs> so it really isn't perfect, uh, I still need to work on a few skills. So first thing that we can notice is that not all of the lines in the warp are uh, centered with the hem. Uh, so this is like the hand woven cloth and here it's not centered. And uh, this also uh, can be shown in the corner, so I have one of the corner that is a bit sticking out. And for me it's something I want to work on and try to improve but it doesn't bother me that much. Uh, this is still a handmade project and for me a handmade project means that there are some imperfections and this is the beauty of it so I don't worry too much about it. Uh, however, with the corner sticking out, if I'm scared that it might unweave, sometimes by hand I just come back and kind of um, sew it in a little bit uh, so with a bit of thread to make sure that it will not stick out, stick out and uh, unweave. That's the only thing here. If I uh, had uh, searched it, well I would be less scared but I might still tuck it in to make sure that it doesn't stick out too much. So uh, that's one thing. And uh, now uh, we are going to move on to uh, the other end of this towel. So, so far I have kept uh, the project all tied together but now this is time to uh, cut the t some of the towels loose. Uh, so I try to uh, reduce the risk of unraveling to its minimum. So the only thing I'm going to cut for now is the first towel and the second towel. So here we have uh, the part where uh, have, there's a scrap yarn, so I'm going to cut right in between of that. I 
I chose the scrap yarn and it's the same color as my handwoven piece, so <laughs> I didn't think this true. So it doesn't show so much on the camera, but I assure you that while I work on it, I know uh, which yarn is my weft yarn and which one is a scrap yarn. So now those two towels are loose and those two towels have a risk of unraveling. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to very carefully just fold this one in for now and I'm going to set this aside very carefully like this okay and now we're only going to work on uh, this towel so there's still some scrap yarn here so first thing I'm going to take it all out because I don't want this in my towel even if it is in the hem I mean this is not something that I wanted so I'm simply going to take it off. This is one of the reasons why I put scrap yarn in between my towels is that once I have cut them loose I have the security here so on the other towel that I've just tossed aside even if it was to move a lot well the first thread to unravel would be uh, the scrap yarn so I would have to be very unlucky if both the scrap yarn and then the weft yarn would unravel so I can have a, a few picks of a <laughs> of um, insurance <laughs> or a few picks of, um, of a safety net yeah so that's kind of a safety net for that so now let's just take it off right so for this first towel I took out this scrap yarn and then I was left with a bit of warp threads uh, sticking out so I had to uh, cut them afterwards I usually do this part uh, with a serger as I mentioned before with a serger the way it works it actually cuts a bit of the fabric and the scrap yarn I always use it uh, as the fabric to cut so that the serger won't have to uh, cut into my hand woven piece so <laughs> I just realized while doing this that the best method to get rid of the scrap yarn would be to simply cut them and not having to uh, pull them out so for the next towels this is what I did now uh, we gotta uh, do the same thing I just did so I'm still going to do my M and uh, stick them with the pin and iron and pin again so let's do this so I stick my uh, little pins at about two inches apart on the hand woven piece. So I really don't know if this is a good <laughs> size to put them apart, but this is what seems to be working for me. Also, please let me know in the comments if I'm using this gauge correctly or not. <laughs> Now the last thing on the list would be to uh, cut the little piece of uh, yarn that is sticking out. So this is the yarn, the tail of yarn that I left while I was uh, either changing colors or when I had to change shuttles because uh, one of my shuttles was empty. So we're lucky because with this one we didn't have that many color changes so <laughs> I don't have so many yarns to cut. All right, so now we have a finished one whole towel. Yay! <laughs> so uh, now that you have really seen everything that I do in order to uh, finish off a towel. So I will keep going uh, with the other three towels and the rags. And uh, to speed up the process a little bit, uh, I'm going to uh, cut them all loose. And but be very careful when I start them because I know that I have the scrap yarn in between each of them. Uh, I know that it will not unravel so much. So I'm going to uh, cut them all, then uh, pin them, iron them, <laughs> pin them again and sew them one after the other. So let's just do this. Yes, 
is another little tip. So um, when I had a uh, changing colors close to the edge, I tried to uh, cut them already before uh, doing the M. So usually I would cut all of the um, I would cut all of those tails later on when I'm the very last step. And it really doesn't matter. I could do it now, but. I like to do it at the end, <laughs> but one thing is that I tried if there have there is some close to the edge here, I would cut it uh, earlier because sometimes it just gets um, in the way of the hem. Sometimes the needle gets stuck in it, and then it just uh, really pulls on the yarn. And in, I have had some messy experience with those threads. So I'm actually going to cut those two as well. And now back to the hemming. So here we made this, uh, a hem that would be about half an inch, which is about the same width uh, as my uh, foot here. So I just try to uh, keep the foot on the edge here and hope that this will make a kind of a straight line. <laughs> So now we are going to work on the rags, so uh, they are a bit different than the other ones. So if you've seen my video about, uh, the second video about weaving uh, my stash busted projects, those were woven on a surprise warp, so uh, I had a few inches that of left of warp and I decided to uh, weave those in. Uh, so the thing with them is that they are a bit narrow. <laughs> so uh, I feel like if I do the hem, so this will be off because it's scrap yarn, so when I take it off and I do the hemming, and if I also do that here, they will be like <laughs> very, very narrow. It could still work, but mm, I'm not sure. So first thing I'm going to do, I am kind of wing it as I'm talking to you. So I'm going to first deal with this part because this will have to be hemmed no matter what. So I'll start with that and then I will figure out what I do with this hem here. Uh, also, I was thinking about maybe cutting it in half to have two rags. So stay tuned, we'll see how this works. I think I am going to keep the nuts because otherwise they will be way too small. My rags will be way too narrow so I'm just going to tighten them up a little bit and then I'm going to trim them 
short gig right now. I find them a bit too long. Here we have one rag. So uh, those rags will definitely not be given away and I will keep them. So, well, I'm, I'm pretty happy with them. So definitely not something I want to give away or brag about, but they are going to be good to clean <laughs> the dishes. So now I'm going to uh, hem the other one. So now I have this big pile of towels, so I'm super happy with how they all turned out. So now they're ready to be given away. And as a closing statement, I will simply show you uh, all the towels one by one so you can see the final result. So let's start with the very first one I wove. So where is it? It's the one with only the cotton slab. So uh, here it is. So uh, all in the color natural. So uh, we have some very nice texture in it and the texture bloom very well as well. So, and that's the one with the big hem. So that's one. And here we have the second one, the one I wove with a uh, 2 cotton. And uh, so this is basically what uh, the work being woven into the weft and I just love it. <laughs> I think it looks so nice. So here it is. I wove the one with kitten uh, boucle. So according to my partner, this is the one that is the less soft, but when you touch it, you kind of feel like this would work to wipe dishes. <laughs> also, uh, I wasn't sure if we would be able to see the little hands tooth with the colors, and I feel like, cause, because the way it's made is a different because it's textured yarn, but it actually worked pretty well. I can still see the little hands tooth pattern here, so pretty happy about that. And now we have the one I wove with cotton chenille, so this one is very different than the others. So because the cotton chenille I use is also uh, mainly white, uh, so I feel like it looks so much brighter than the other one that this one almost looked dirty. <laughs> so I don't feel like it really matches together because of that. But as a single, just this alone, I think I, I like it very much. I like the density of the towel. I really feel like this would be a good hand towel. And again here, I wasn't sure I would get the hand, hand stood effect. And I I don't really have the same Hansdut effect, that's for sure, but it still looks pretty similar. So from far away, we still kind of get a Hansdut vibe, so, or maybe closer by, so we still get a bit of a Hansdut vibe, so I'm pretty happy about that. So that's the final one, and my surprise warp rags that were are going to be used here, so I'm not going to give them away. So uh, there they are, so I can't wait to uh, use them and see if they work well to uh, wipe dishes and clean the house. So a surprise warp is a surprise warp, warp even if it doesn't end up as we thought it would. <laughs> so thank you again for being here, uh, if you like this video please give it a big thumbs up and see you next week, because next week I will be weaving this here.